Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, a very biased collection, as usual. Um, today, I would like to talk about an algorithm. Well, the theorem is kind of that the algorithm works. And well, this is the algorithm and it's about parabolas and distance, which I find a little bit surprising on first glance, but if you think about it carefully, it's kind of what you would expect. But it's still pretty beautiful and kind of helps a lot in a lot of real world problems. So um, let's have a look. Maybe it's running now, right now in the background somehow. Probably not, but uh, for a lot of real world problems, you'll actually have this algorithm running because it's pretty good and pretty fast. So what I would like to discuss are Voronoi diagrams, so VDs. Um, and this is the following idea and a very powerful idea that plays a role in a lot of, uh, as I said, real world problems. And what I do is I fix a number of seats so I just have the plane here, R2, um, and the background, and I fix a number of seats, which are just points in R2. So here are all of these little points here, and they're just the plane, the seats in the plane. And each one has an associated cell. You can already see here this cell type picture, and it consists of all points closer than, it to, than any other point, right? So there are all points in the plane where the, the seat is the closest point. Um, so let's have a look at the Mathematica demonstration, which is linked in the description. So hopefully this will be clear in this demonstration. So the seats here are those little uh, aim, aiming symbols, um, the cross symbols, and I can move them around. So all the ones, let's say in the red one here, are the points in the plane that are closest to the seat in the red area. And if you move this around, then of course the points will move as well. So if you go very close, for example, to this one here, it kind of, oop, and then it topples over. Uh, anyway, so this is really like closest points. And if you move that around, the cell moves with it. And here again, points move around, cell moves with it, although all points that are closest to the seats. And it gives you this nice type of, I could see it here, whoop, 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 whoop. This is with this nice type of uh, cell picture. And the goal, and that's the whole point of the algorithm I'm going to describe is actually, how did the Mathematica demonstration work? I'm not quite sure how that Mathematica demonstration worked. I should have looked it up, but the point is, how does a computer do it, right? So how do we find those efficiently? How does it work? How, how was this picture here created? It's not quite obvious to associate to any point, like the its closest seat. That's not quite obvious how you would do that. Uh, so it's not really clear from the outset why this should be an easy problem or whether, I, whether it actually is an easy problem or a hard problem, or, I just can't tell. Well, the computer demonstration that we have just seen kind of should convince you already that it can't be too bad because it was running pretty smoothly. Um, and it actually isn't too bad, but it's not clear from the outset. Okay, I just want to make sure that we understand what a Voronoi diagram is, the VD, and it really takes place in everyday life. So um, there are many examples you can think of, like a, a map where you have airports and you want to have the area uh, which is for the closest airport or something, or in soccer here, well, I just took soccer as an example because I found the picture online, you can have Roanoi cells where the seats here are the various players, either of the blue team, here the whatever goalie of the blue team, or of the what is it, yellow team, and kind of the Voronoi cells are, are now the area on the uh, R2, which is our little playground here, where the um, the player is closest to. It's kind of the, the part the player controls, if you want. Um, so here, the goalie here has a really large area because essentially all players are in front of the goalie and so on. And it kind of makes... Um, a lot of sense from the dynamics of, of soccer to analyze those diagrams such that you kind of want to maximize the area um, your players control. And you can think of various different uh, everyday life problems. So it definitely makes sense to have, or to, at least to ask the question whether we can find these diagrams very efficiently. And I guess I said, that's not quite clear whether that should be possible or not. And this is where the algorithm comes in. And the algorithm doesn't even, doesn't, does solves the question. Well, that's the whole point, but it does a little bit more because I think personally find it a bit surprising how it actually works. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's a parabola algorithm and it works as follows. We have a demonstration 
uh, in a second, so a live demonstration, there's a sweep line, uh, which is the one I will move. That's a green line. And there's a beach line. That's a red line. And the, the, the sweep line goes down in this picture, and the beach line will create the roller by cells. Uh, why is it called beach line? Um, well, it looks like a beach, I guess. Why is it called sweep line? Well, I sweep it up and down. Um, so that's easy. So, and this kind of creates the volume noise cells, uh, well, kind of inductively, if you want. So all of these are done here. So these are good, and these are still to be done. These are still uh, in progress. And as the sweep line moves down, it will create those parabolas, and it works as follows. So every um, seat is actually the focus of a parabola. So here, maybe I shouldn't use green. Give me another try. So here is a parabola and would go all the way like this. The next seed gets a parabola as well. It looks a little bit like this. The next seed gets a parabola as well. It looks a little bit like this and so on. And the intersection points of the parabolas are exactly, um, so here you can see it very nicely, are exactly the uh, corners, the boundary of the Voronoi cells. So you just put it down, you have those parabolas and they're they are really explicitly given, I just won't write them down, the formulas for the parabolas and the intersections will be the Voronoi cells. So let's have a look at an illustration. So here's Mathematica again, essentially the same picture, but now it moves. Can move, so I can move the sweep line up and down and everything above the sweep line is done and everything below still needs to be done. And let's have a look roughly here so you can see here very beautiful, the parabola around with the focus being the seat. And here's another one of them, here's another one of them and so on. And the intersection of the various parabolas, here let's let's have a look at this one here, the intersection of the various parabolas will draw our boundary of uh, the Voronoi cell. So let's follow it and eventually boof, it crashes over. And as soon as the sweep line hits a new um, seat, there's a new parabola coming and it will create new boundaries. And that's pretty beautiful. It's kind of a cool idea. So uh, this distance problem, to kind of remind you why noise cells are about distance, you can kind of solve it with parabolas, intersections of parabolas, which makes sense if you think of how distance is defined, but it's still a pretty cool algorithm. It's called a sweep line algorithm because of the sweep line, I guess. So it could create it could created inductively by sweeping down the line. And in each step, you can only need to solve a certain number of parabola equations, which is not so bad. So it's kind of semi-local. So example, for example, this one here above here, it doesn't care for this one because its cell is already done. So it's kind of a really, really nice algorithm. And the point is it runs relatively fast. So n log n, n is the number of seats, is essentially of order n. So I have two plots here to convincingly convince you that n log n is essentially linear, whatever that means. The irregular plot n squared just goes off very quickly. n and n log n are kind of, n log n is a bit faster growing than n, but it's not much faster as you can see here, or even nicer I personally find if you take a log plot, it's this one, and in a log plot, um, an exponential function would be a line. So here n squared is a bit easier to control. And as you can see here, these are essentially the same. They have essentially the same type of, of growth rate. And all this is saying is that this algorithm has the worst case running time of n log n, which means essentially linear, which is very surprising. That's as fast as it gets, essentially. And this is pretty, pretty cool. So this algorithm, the parabola algorithm, is not just visually very beautiful, but it also runs ridiculously fast. Um, and as I said, the parabolas are given by explicit formulas, but uh, we don't need that here. But you wouldn't need that, of course, if you would program it yourself. Okay, and the sweep line algorithms, it's kind of a little bit the real point of this video. They are very, very popular. Here my sweep line uh, goes from left to right, instead of from bottom to top which is very bad, but uh, from top to bottom, which is very bad. But anyway, it's just what it is. And it can solve many problems. So here you would solve um, the classical one. It's the one that's uh, illustrated up here. It would solve the problem of finding line intersections. So everything to the left of your sweep line is kind of an active line, line one. So line one here, line two here, line three here. And you have already found this intersection. And that's about it. And you move. Uh, further, 
and the sweep line will then find all intersections and also can tell you how they intersect uh, well in pairs or in triples or whatever. And it's again, the point is it's it's very fast usually those sweep line algorithms and there have been many, many breakthroughs in computational complexity by using sweep line algorithms. So sweep line is just the idea that you um, kind of do everything um, in, in order of time. So something will be done and something still needs to be done and you just sweep your line over and this is um, going from done, needs to be done to done. And uh, the algorithm I showed you here, the Voronoi diagram algorithm is just a very beautiful illustration of a sweep line uh, algorithm and it runs very, very fast. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.